99.9 WHAM. Wham! Radio. Season 5, Episode 8. We start this episode with Pixie, Fauna, Rocky, and Lemur sitting in the cubicles inside of the Wham! Radio office. This episode will take place with us mainly following Pixie around for the day. Let's tune in now. So, anybody know what's going on with our music lately? Huh? What do you mean? I did the song set up and it should be all good. It's like the format's changed. There's a lot more old folk songs playing now than there used to be. And I don't like it. Liam, see if you can go into the computer and change it, or see what's going on. Can do. Just let me eat my breakfast real quickly, and I'll be all goody. Okay, sounds good. What'd you bring to eat today? Pancakes with homemade maple syrup. Yummy yum. Chicken cha-cha. Can I get a bite, bird dog, please? Oh, boy, it smells so delicious. It looks so yummy and succulent. <gasps> and, well, if, if you don't give me a taste, I'm going to Peter Parker all over them. Fuck that. Here, you can have one bite. Guppy. Mm, Thanks, lean dog. Can I have another bite, please? <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry for interjecting. But I gotta bounce out a little early today, boss. I got a doctor's appointment and a few things I gotta take care of. Go ahead, hon. Do what you need to do. You do so much for us. Take the rest of the day with pay. Really? Shibby. Thanks, Secret Squirrel. I'm gonna go duck out now. I'll see you later. Floppity flamingo crap is that? I want the rest of the day off with pay. And I work just as hard as Pixie does. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> you, you almost got me there. <clears throat> I laughed and choked and coughed at the same time. No, you don't, dude. Pixie is the backbone of Wham. You know what, bird dog? If you cough and laugh and fart at the same time, you'll die. That ain't true. Wait, is it? I think it is true. I did two out of the three and my life flashed before my eyes. But no, sorry, Rock. I can only afford to lose one of my employees today and Pixie already has it. Oh, man. That's so lame. Oh, man, where? Did you guys hear about the conspiracy theory involving humans? No, shut up. I don't want to know. I'll be back in a minute. I gotta pee. You better not dug out on us, bird dog. You know, I got him trying to sneak out once and he got stuck. <laughs> so, Fauna, if I can't fix it, what do you want me to do? Are we just gonna do a format change? Never! We're number one in ratings all around the world. Why change a good thing, hmm? But if I didn't put the folk music in and neither did you, then who did? That's a good question. I'm gonna go change the password and I'll run it down for you and me. And hey, mighty chance. Would Pixie have access to that? Nope. You know that's a good idea. I mean, we're the only two with access to it, Liam. Let me know what the new password is, and when you're done, I gotta make a few calls. I'll be in my office if you need me. Pixie would balls as nobody was paying attention to what she was saying. Sometimes I wonder, am I invisible or a ghost? It's like nobody hears me talk. It's so annoying. She shrugged her shoulders and went and turned around and walked over to her desk as Lemur and Autumn were talking. She would grab her things and head out the door. She walked to her vehicle, would open up the door, get inside, and turn it on. She would go over and rage and open up her glove box and stare at a mysterious key for a minute. She looked up on her phone, what it could go to, and discovered it belonged to a storage unit she had. She put the address into her GPS and headed out on her way. A weird sound would come through the radio and would say... <laughs> Number 5 has been compromised. We believe it was... Hello? Who's there? I repeat, Double O Five has been compromised. We believe it was... Made out the rendezvous over and out. The storage shed? Like the place I'm going to now that I didn't know I had? A mysterious and familiar voice would come through. I'm on my way over and out. It wouldn't be long before Pixie arrived at her storage shed. She would get out of the car and go up to it and unlock it. She lifted it up and walked inside and then immediately shut it. In the distance, we see someone is watching from the shadows, but we can't make out who it is. As she walks inside the storage shed, she stumbled to find the light to turn it on. When she did, though, she would be amazed at the technology that was all around her. 
she saw a computer and a ham radio and would go over and turn them on. She would get flashes inside of her mind of previous events, like using the ham radio to talk to someone. When the computer asked for a password to log in, she coincidentally knew what it was. She would get another memory of herself holding a pen and making it flash before she would return back to reality. As Pixie looked all around, she remembered that she had been working for a secret government agency known as the SGA, investigating the town of Eagle Falls of its conspiracy theories. She walked over to the ham radio, turned it on, and talked into it and said, Hello? This is Pixie Fairy, 005. Do you read me? Pixie Fairy? We thought you were compromised. Almost. I just had to jog my memory. I have data on this book. It's a choose-your-own-adventure book, but when you read a story, it brings you inside. I'm sending the information I have now. Very good. We've reviewed the data that you've collected and determined that Eagle Fall shall be destroyed and are pulling you and all the agents out. <laughs> shall be destroyed? No, 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 no. That can't be right. We're supposed to work together to bring peace and harmony. How is total destruction of a town peaceful? Bixie would start typing something into the computer. It would be revealed to be a virus and it would slowly start to upload itself from where Pixie's location was to wherever the SGA was talking to her from. No, this can't be true. This is a good town with nice animals. How have you come to this conclusion? After analysis, we discovered that Eagle Falls is the only town that remains on Earth. The whole planet is unusable, but somehow that makes the town thrive. It must be cleansed, because the gods are returning. The gods are returning? That doesn't make any sense. How long till termination? You have 48 hours to evacuate. No, this isn't right. I will fight you with everything I've got. So, you're handing in your resignation? Good, we're done with you anyway. Damn right I am. I won't let you hurt my friends or the people of this town. You're too late. The process has already begun. Bixie would hurry up and start hacking into the computer and try to get a location to where her employer was broadcasting from. All available operatives. Pixie Fairy has been compromised. You know what this means. She cannot survive with the knowledge that she has. Terminate her and any that help her at all costs. Switch to next program channel. I'm almost there. I just need to follow the IP location trail. You're good, Pixie Possum. But we are the best. Over and out. A warning popped up on the computer screen that would count down from three, two. As soon as Pixie saw the countdown, she would get up and run away. She ran over to the door and whipped it open, and the computer would blow up, and the explosion would send her flying forward towards the parking lot. She got up off the ground in pain and ran back inside the blown up storage shed. Things inside were just starting to catch on fire, and she ran inside to see the computer screen. As she got there, she would see an address on the screen in the town of Eagle Falls before the computer went dark. We see everything inside of her storage shed ignite in the little tiny fires of the big explosion. The mysterious figure that was watching Pixie the whole time would mutter to themselves, What the punko flop? Damn it, Pixie, what the hell have you gotten yourself into? Pixie would run out of the storage locker and a few more things inside would continue to blow up. She would quickly run over to her car, get inside, start it up, and peel away. The storage locker would explode one more time, but from a random blast that fell from the clouds in the sky. We see the mysterious stranger get flung backwards into the air when this happens. Up the road and over a few side streets, we see Pixie fleeing in her car, talking to herself. Okay, let's see. The address on the computer said 64 Hayes Road. I know where that is. It's just past Wham Radio. I better go there to see if I can find any clues as to exactly what's going on here and how to stop it. Pixie floored her vehicle towards the mysterious location, weaving in and out of traffic with the ease of a bird with light, but she didn't know she was also being followed. Oh, what the hell? I knew they were going to come after me. I just didn't think it was going to be this quick. There would be two bikes and two cars chasing her. She slammed on the brakes, and one of the bikers would crash into the back of the car, hitting her, dying upon impact. The biker screamed in pain as they were sent flying. Next, Pixie would put her paw on the pedal of metal and took off like a bat out of hell. One biker would be next to her driving and raise his gun, firing at her. But Pixie would duck and his bullets would go through Pixie's car and hit the driver of one of the cars that was chasing her on the other side. 
The driver of the car loses control and smash into an embankment. Only two more sets of bad guys remain. One would be on a bike and the other one was inside of a car. Bixie would take a sharp left turn and lose the guys in the car as they crashed into an 18-wheeler, totally in their vehicle. But the bike compensated for the hard turn and would continue to pursue Bixie. The biker aimed his gun and would start firing at her vehicle. Bixie would duck and hope that none of the bullets would hit her and make another hard turn. She wouldn't see how the final guy on the bike became incapacitated, but you, the listener, well, as she turned the hard corner holding her head down, another vehicle from oncoming traffic would swerve out of the way from hitting her and slam their vehicle into the bike, saving Pixie's life. She would never know it, but it would be the mysterious figure that was watching her back at the storage shed. The mysterious figure would yell as he slammed his car into the biker. Turtle pop. <laughs> Turtle pop. Yeah, all right. And hum -a -ma 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 -ma, hum -a my balls too. The car that took out the biker whips their vehicle around and starts to follow Pixie from a distance. We go back to Pixie fleeing as she talked to herself. Damn, that was a close one. Wait, what am I doing? I gotta stop, go back, and confirm the kill. Maybe I can get knowledge from one of those little bastards. She hurried up and turned the corner and took a few left and right turns and quickly found her way back to one of the attackers. The biker was still unconscious, but... Alive. Bixie noticed this when she checked for a pulse. She hurried up and loaded the unconscious biker inside of her trunk of her car and left as police sirens could be heard in the distance. She continued to talk to herself, saying, Frack, where can I bring this loser to interrogate him? Hmm, normally I bring him back to my storage shed, but that's been destroyed once I quit the SGS. I guess my two options are Lemur's Basement or Wham Radio's. Fuck, I don't want to pull everybody into this mess, so I guess Wham Radio's Basement it is. It would be close to dinner time when Pixie arrived at Wham Radio. She knew what would be safe as everyone should be back at Lemur's house eating dinner now. Pixie parked the car in the back of the parking lot and headed to the cellar doors and unlocked them. She would make her way back to her car, open up the trunk, and drag the victim into the basement. She would tie him down and then leave and go to the bathroom. She would return with a bucket full of water and splash it in the prisoner's face. She screamed angrily. Wake up now! I want answers! Mother Falcon! Bugs Bunny, help me! I'll mess you up! I'll get straight to the point. I know the SGA wants me dead, but why do they really want to destroy Eagle Falls? Oh, oh, forget you, you crazy bitch! You were one of us, you know how it is! I won't say a word, just kill me! And do what you gotta do! Or oh, do you know how what it takes? Oh, I'm going to kill you, but it's up to you how I do it. Do you want it painful, slow, messy, quick, neat, where you can barely feel a thing? Come on, let me help you make this decision. Tell me anything, and I'll make it a clean kill. You won't feel a thing. The SGA? Well, I don't know about them. They seem kind of slow and messy. All right, all right, all right. Now you're talking my language. I want to quit. Hey, let me out of these bindings, and we can do it the old way. You versus me, when it walks away, loser dies. I don't think so. You're the one tied up in a chair. There's no way that's going to happen. We're either playing my way or no way at all. And trust me, you don't want to see no way at all. That's slow and painful. My way is quick. Both are effective. Either way, you die. So I'll leave the choice to you and ask you again. Why does the SGA want to destroy Eagle Falls? The prisoner would look away and not say a thing. Bixie would punch him in the face. But when she did this, the animal mask would fall off and it would be revealed to be a human. Wait, what? I don't understand what's going on. This has got to be a joke. Humans aren't real anymore. The gods will return! You can't stop us. Our plan is already in motion. What's your plan? It's to destroy the town, but why? You don't get it. You've been working for humans all along. All the intel you've collected and sent away has just gone to them. There's no other place on Earth that exists or thrives as well as Eagle Falls. And because of that, they're coming. Who's coming? Humans? Why? Do they want to try and take back what was once theirs? Did something happen on Mars? Bixie would punch the human in the face. I want answers! Before the human victim could say anything else, they would bite down on something inside of their mouth. This was a side eye capsule that Bixie had knocked free, hidden inside the human's tooth. They would fall over to the ground and start having a seizure and foaming at the mouth. Ow, my paw. Punching people in the face hurts. Wait, did he just... Aw, oh, come on, really? Cyanide capsule hidden in your mouth? <sighs> 
I should have known better. I gotta check his pockets for right, loose. Pixie bent down to put her paws inside the human's pants. She would feel something move, and she would grasp in terror. Ew! What the hell is that long pole thing in his pants, and why did it move? She would kick the human three times in three different spots to make sure that he was really dead, then bend over and proceed to put her paw in the other pockets of his pants. She would find a set of keys and analyze them. This is a key, but what the hell does it go to? Door? Ship, maybe? Aha! That's it! Didn't they say they had sleeper agents down here spying? These keys gotta be to a mothership. If I can find it and take it out, I can save us all. But first, I've gotta cover my tracks. Bixie was being watched from afar, still by the stranger, not muttered to himself. Oh, Pixie, what the hell are you doing? What's going on? This, this doesn't make any sense. Is that a freaking human's body? But that means the S-G-A-R... Humans? Pixie started digging a hole in the basement of Warm Radio and would place the body into it. She had no clue that where she buried the body was the same spot Morty the Mortician was summoned long ago. She snuck out of Wham Radio basement and locked it all up. A car would quickly drive through Wham Radio parking lot and Pixie had just exited outside. Paranoid, she would jump into a giant shrub, but it would be nothing. She would get up off the ground and scurry over to her car, hop inside and drive away quickly, talking to herself. That was weird. I wonder who was driving by. Nobody comes through here at night. I need to be on guard. There could be more human spies. Pixie's phone would ring, and it would be Fauna calling her. Fauna had called her three times today, but never left a message until now. Pixie played it through the car. Hey, Pixie, where are you? I've been trying to get a hold of you all day. I know I gave you the day off, and I just wanted to make sure everything was good. Work was hell once you left. All these crazy old people showed up. I'll tell you about it later. Call me when you get a moment. Love you, sis. Pixie pulled up her messages and sent one to Fauna. She wasn't paying attention to the fact that she was now being followed. She would send Fauna a text that said, Hey, Secret Squirrel. Sorry, my service has been shit. Doctor's appointment was good. Just going to stop and grab some food and then I'll be home. Love ya. Pixie sent the message and looked up and noticed that she was now being followed. She weaved in and out of traffic, but no matter what she did, she couldn't lose the biker that was behind her. She saw a tractor trailer straight ahead and sped up. The 18-wheeler would blow his horn, honking for her to get out of the way, but she wouldn't budge. She was playing chicken. At the very last minute, she would wait and dodge. To the right, the biker that was behind her tailgating her would smash right into the 18-wheeler and shatter the bike into a thousand pieces. Pixie would see it all happen and figured that would be the end, but what she didn't see was that whoever was on the bike had jumped off right before the impact and landed on the 18-wheeler, sliding across the top of it. We see a shell fall off the back and land right in front of Pixie's car. She would end up slamming on the brakes and Tommy the turtle would pop out of the shell, saying, Pixie, what the hell? I've been trying to flag you down. You're lucky I'm a turtle and I can retract within my shell and glide. Otherwise, you would have killed me. Oh, my Bugs Bunny. Tommy, I'm so sorry. I had no clue. Get in. I'll explain everything. Tommy limped over to the passenger side and got into Pixie. Pixie's car as she peeled away. He said, Pixie, what the hell is going on? As your husband, I deserve to know. No, you're right. I'm sorry. I hid this from you. I thought I was working for our government, but I was wrong. It was the humans' government of Mars. Of, of, uh, of Mars? Pixie, what the hell? You should have told me because I have been as well, but I've been trying to take them down. You weren't. I got all that info you sent them, and then some. You're a traitor to your country. I didn't know what I was doing. I thought I was helping Eagle Falls. Yes, I researched and recorded conspiracy theories and strange abnormalities. Or, well, I did. I don't anymore, though. And when I realized the truth, it was too late, and now they want to kill me because of what I know. But I can't remember anything. I need your help, Tommy. I can't do it alone. I got you, Pixie. I said the words till death do us part, and I meant it. I'll stop asking you questions. What do we gotta do? Really? You're, you're not mad that I hid this from you? No. I'm mad, damn government. But with this case, I'd rather know nothing than know it all. But for your sake, I'm here to help you out. Oh, Tommy, you're the best. But I can't put your life in danger. As much as I want your help, I, I don't need it. I'm having second thoughts. Can you do me a favor and grab my lighter in the glove box for me? Pixie bent down and reached for a pair of her sunglasses and put them on while Tommy went into the glove box and grabbed her lighter. Whoa! This is a strange lighter. How does it work? You have to twist the top, pull down, and let go. Tommy twisted the top, pulled it down, and let it go, and he said, This thing's junk. I'll take a big lighter over this crap any day. 
Hey, wait, is this a... A flash of light would beam out from the van and Tommy wouldn't be able to finish his sentence. The flash would knock about as it was one of the toys Pixie had been given to do the human's dirty work. She drove around town looking all over, trying to figure out where a human would hide a spaceship in town, talking to herself. Hmm, it doesn't make any sense. Where would they hide a ship and why are they even down here? Pixie tried to remember things from before, but she couldn't remember how she got her mind erased with to begin with. She started to wonder if she even knew anything at all when she got flashes of different things that appear inside of her mind. Ugh, crap on the tracker. Anytime I try to remember anything about the humans, my nose starts to bleed. As she was driving, she passed a billboard in that said, Eagle Falls State Fair in town for one week only, five miles ahead. That's it. That's the perfect spot to hide an alien human ship at the fair. Nobody would think twice it's there. It could be disguised to look like a trailer or a ride. Hmm. All right, I think I've got this. It's a good thing it's nighttime. I can use the cover of darkness to my advantage. Bixie would arrive at the fair and walk inside as animals were pouring out. The fair was closing for the evening, but that didn't stop her from going inside and taking a look around. Ten minutes were turned into fifty, and she would not find anything at all. She started to head back to her car, wandering around through the fair when she saw doubles of something. No, it, it can't be. It looks exactly the same. Bixie would walk over to the ride that looked like a spaceship. She was staring at it because there was two of them right next to each other, but one had a sign on it that read closed due to repair. She walked over and looked for a door, but didn't seem to find one. A guardian would emerge out of nowhere and ask her, Hey, what are you doing, Miss? The fair's closed for tonight. You got the two options. You can come back to my place <laughs> with me, and we can hang out, chat a bit, or you could leave, but you can't stay here. <laughs> That's where you're wrong. I have a third option. Sorry, not sorry. Bixie pushed the carnival worker on the ground and then picked him up by their feet and spun him around in the air a few times before she threw him against the broken chip. When she did this, a door would emerge and open. Hey, hey, what the? Uh, well, hey now, wait a minute. You don't want to do this? How are you so strong? I'll run this. <laughs> Bixie walked over to the carny and kicked him in the nuts and then knocked him out with one solid bun. She would walk gun to the ship and sneak around. She wasn't sure what she was looking at, but she knew she had to destroy this thing. She worked her way to the bridge of the ship and would be greeted by a human. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes to fruition. Yes, Pixie Possum. Welcome aboard. Who the hell are you? I'm the one that you've been reporting everything to. So you're the one I have to kill to stop the humans from invading. I knew I never should have wiped your memory. Pixie, remember, you're my pet. I sent you on a mission to check out the strange abnormalities on this planet. Talking animals, flying ghosts, an all-powerful narrator controlling world. These are the things you have reported back to me. You were never supposed to have a life amongst them. You already have one with me, remember? No, that can't be true. I was married before I came to Eagle Falls. You're lying, trying to confuse me and keep me from doing what needs to be done. But I'm focused. You won't stop me and I will save Eagle Falls from your assimilation. You're already too late. That started years ago when two of our ambassadors, Jay and Kay, landed here. They never returned home, but we got all the data that they recorded. We know the strengths and weaknesses of the townspeople of Eagle Falls. They won't stand a chance from our invasion once I give the signal. So you're here to what? Make everyone your pets and take over Eagle Falls? For the most part, yes. For those that fight, death will fall upon them. For those that surrender, they will be given murder as pets of humans. We will take over Eagle Falls as we have destroyed all of the resources on Mars that are needed to find a new home. Most of Earth is uninhabitable, but we learned to fix that on Mars, with the exception of the small town of Eagle Falls. We have been studying it, and we believe we can wake up the rest of the planet and make it livable again. But to do that, you would cause the death and destruction of thousands of animals. You would de-evolve the animal race. 
don't see anything wrong with that? We're humans. We're on top of the food chain. We take what is ours. We always have, and we always will. Until we are no more. Then I guess you're gonna have to be no more. Pixie would finish her sentence and reach for the gun at her side. It wouldn't even be fully out of the holster before she fired it. There would be three shots aimed at the human, but he never saw any of the three bullets coming towards him. In his last few moments, he would say, Ah! Ah! You bitch! You shot me! You shot your own owner! How could you? I told you I was gonna stop you. Why would you do this? To be our pets is not a bad thing. We treat them like gods. They get toys and treats and live the good life, never having to work. What? But you take away our rights and our freedom? But isn't that a small price to pay for peace? Ah. The human would lean out on the floor of the ship, and Pixie would go over to the controls to try to figure out how to launch it back into space, but instead initiated the ship's self-destruct sequence, and it would begin to count down from a minute. Mother Falcon. I gotta figure out how to make this thing fly quickly, or it's gonna blow up on me, the fair, and the town. She tried working any and every council on the ship, but nothing was working. As the countdown reached 30 seconds, she went over to the captain's chair and saw the computer and needed a sign in. She grabbed the human's dead body and would put his hand on the sensor of the chair and sign in to the computer. The computer would say, Hello, Captain Trips. Would you like me to cancel the self-destruct sequence? No, I want you to launch the ship into outer space in 10 seconds. Command received. Ship will self-destruct in 25 seconds. Pixie started to run down the corridor towards the exit. The ship would begin to lift off the ground and Pixie would fall down and slide out the door. She hung on for a quick second before losing her grip but would fall to safety in a bounce house. The ship would take off and zoom into the night sky but blow up in a glorious blaze that looked like a firework. Whew, thank Bugs Bunny that Bounce House was there. Oh, crap. I forgot about Tommy. He still passed out in the passenger side seat of my car. She ran out of the fair and over to her car and would get inside. When she closed the car door, Tommy would wake up. Uh, ah! What is going on? I thought you were driving. Tommy, it's okay. Nope, we're in the fair parking lot. We are? Phew. When I woke up, I thought we were going to hit the car in front of us. <sighs> You said we were at the fair? Yep. You don't remember? No. Should I? What happened? Oh, you know, nothing. Just that you placed second place in the hot dog eating competition. I think you may have overdone it with the beer, though. You passed out. Hmm. Weird. I don't remember any of that, but I'll take your word for it. Beer on a hot day does have that effect on me. When I burp, I do taste hot dogs. Come on, let's go home. Sounds good. I can't wait to tell Fauna about her day. Pixie would be so lost in her own mind that she wouldn't even notice that Rocky and Lemur were a few cars behind her passed out in the parking lot as she drove away. She had wondered if she had done the right thing. What if humans did make animals' lives for the better and bring peace to Earth? She contemplated wiping her own mind so she wouldn't remember but decided against it. She figured the knowledge might come in handy to use again someday. She knew that if the human was telling the truth, that that part of her life was now over and she wasn't going to pay any more attention to something that needed to end. She looked over at Tommy and said, You know, babe, I don't know what our future holds, but I feel confident you and I can handle anything. Anything, huh? I like the sound of that. Ooh la la. I can think of some dirty things I like to try. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for, because I can think of a few things too. Eat. I'm afraid to ask, but like what? You're just going to have to wait and see what I have in store. Tommy would grab Pixie Small with his and they would lock eyes, and he said, I love you, babe. I wouldn't change anything about you. You're perfect. But what if I was a secret agent? Well, there's something I should tell you. I am, and you're under arrest. Tommy opened up Pixie's glove box and reached inside and pulled out the pen. He would pull down the cap, and with a quick flash would appear. He would erase Pixie and his memory. Pixie awoke in the fair parking lot with Tommy in the passenger side seat. She found a note in Tommy's handwriting saying, It's better this way. She muttered to herself, Wait, what? Better this way? As we go to outer space, we see an armada of human ships just chilling, waiting outside Earth's atmosphere. We zoom into one of the ships, who seems to be 
evil leader. She is standing around watching the earth, waiting for something, when a grunt walks up to her and says, General, we have communication stations set up and are ready for action. We also have placed old nostalgic stores in the town for when we arrive. We don't think any of the animals should notice. Good! With the death of my kids, J&K, I will finally get my revenge. Betsy will pay for turning her back on us. But my queen, it's been days since we've heard from Captain Trips. What if he was taken out down there and the animals are feasting on his body? Hello, Lisa. Even if he dies, there's still precautions in play. No. She grabbed the grunt, ruffled his shirt, and pulled him close to her face. As she went to say something, an explosion lit up the darkness of space for a brief moment. See? You spoke too soon. The hairs are signal now. Ready, Leomar. We attack tomorrow. Kill the music. We zoom out from the inside of the ship and see just how many ships are in the human Amana, and there looks to be thousands upon thousands. We see all the ships start to make their course towards Earth, and everything fades to black. 